Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm here today to review the QQQs. And guess what? Market held today. Despite the fact that we gapped down today and broke from yesterday's rally, which I was very surprised to see the gap down today, we did not fall. In a gap like this, it'll look like this. We should have fallen off the planet. We didn't. What did that mean? It means it's a sign. It's a sign the market is actually not going to fall. I was really looking at this today, and I said this is so, so critical. Critical meaning that if we broke Friday's low, we were a goner. What we must do, absolutely without a shot of a doubt, must do when no, no chances, no exceptions, no nothing. We must gap up tomorrow. I don't care if it's a baby gap up or a B gap up or a monster gap up or a three cent gap up. We must gap up tomorrow. We must. We must in order to hold the rally that held today from the, from the gap down that did not go anywhere. In an ideal world, we actually gap up big tomorrow, which very well could happen because we, we were supported today in the gap down. The only way that we didn't fall off the planet here today, even though we closed red, was with buying. And it's institutional buying. And I know you say, well, Melissa, we closed red. Yes. But in the gap down today and the look of the gap and this whole configuration, we should have fallen like a rock off the planet. And we didn't do it. So what does that tell me? That tells me that we're going to hold. Because there's no way we would have been supported in the gap down today in the crappy, crappy look of this chart here in the last week without buying. So the powers that be, the people that control the world, the people that are controlling the market, which is the bulls, even though you may not think it, it is. And this is the thing. I was talking to my broker about this over the lunch period. And I called her. And I said, you know what? These are the days that people look at the market and they get mad. They get upset and they get confused and then they get upset with themselves and they say, gosh darn it, because, and actually not even today, but really the last two weeks, because I'm telling you, the market here rallied all this time, looked like it was going to make a new high, looks perfect, and then gap down here on this day, I forget the reason, but whatever, we did, and then we fell hard in here, and then we rallied yesterday and this, and this, the, actually the last two weeks, the last two weeks of trading is the kind of thing that people look at the market and they get mad. They get very, very mad because if you didn't see this, you would see this, you say, oh gosh, we're finally okay again. And then people start to go long and all of a sudden people go long and then boom, and then we fall. But I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong. We're still higher. Why we did this, I don't know. It's only two weeks of trading. It's only a couple of days. And if we were going to fall, we would have fallen today. If we were going to fall, we would have fallen today in the gap down, but we must gap up tomorrow. But I'm telling you that the action, the trading action today was critical. We had to hold Friday's low. We did. We did. We held Friday's low. We got down today. We didn't fall hard. And we didn't sell off. And how, the only way that we didn't sell off today is one reason. We got bought. I know it doesn't look like we got bought because we closed red, but we did. We came down in here. We held the low at 10 o'clock. We set the low of the day. We never broke it. We had a big rally here into this area into 2 o'clock. And then that was it. We just didn't follow through for the rest of the day. This is a massive rally that happened into 2 o'clock. So we just didn't follow through. But we must in the gap tomorrow. In which case, we must gap up. So institutional buying held the gap today. This, this gap today would never never not have fallen if it wouldn't have been for money coming in to buy the market. So the people that control the market bought the market today in order to support it. So the market's higher. I've, this is the biggest sign of strength I've seen in the market since the day that we saw the turnaround day here. This is the biggest sign of strength I've seen in the market. The biggest sign of conviction that tells you the market's definitively higher because they would not have bought this market gap down today. And, and they would have just let it break. It's just, just would have let it break. Buying came in and supported it, and it was institutional buying or it would have fallen because everybody else is looking at this and they're screaming, and they're upset, and they're crying, and they're scared because they thought the market was higher here and people are long stocks, and then they sell, and they're scared, 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 and they sell. But institutions are the one that control the market, and they bought it today. They bought it in the gap down today and supported it, even though we closed red. But I want to see more conviction from those supports, and I want to see it happening in a gap up tomorrow. And it, in an ideal world, the market gaps up here around this area. Not doesn't have to be over the high today, around 106, 106.30. It's, this is literally 50 cents. we got to gap up tomorrow 50 cents. We do that, we're going to rally, and we'll rally up to this area and have a nice green day tomorrow. And we must. There's just no question about it. No excuses, no crappy bad news from overseas, no foreign whatevers. I don't care what the rest of the world does. This market must be supported in the gap of tomorrow. It has to. And I do believe it will or it would have fallen today. But I'm telling you, it was a critical day for the market. It did it. It held. It was institutional buying even though we closed red. I said today, as long as we don't trade down over the low Friday, we're fine. But I'm telling you, if we do, it's not going to be good. But I don't think we do because we would have today if we would have. But it's very strange, though. Very strange. And this is the kind of thing, as I was saying, when I talk to my broker over lunch, that people get upset. They get upset because as soon as the market does this, they get all excited and say, yay, we're finally, finally higher. And then the market falls. 
ever since yes, and then it falls. Then people are trapped again. Then they quick sell and they're scared and they're scared and they sell and the market's going to flip around again and go up and make the new high that it was always going to make. But just because we fell for the last five days doesn't mean that we broke the trend. We never broke the trend. We never broke the trend at 180. And we break the trend at 180. We didn't break the trend. We break the 200 period moving average. We never broke the trend at all this year. And if we, uh, not at 180, I'm sorry, I was talking about a spy. We never broke this area over here, which was 85. And we got nowhere near that anomaly day in the queues. But I'm saying that's what's so weird about this. It's, it's just so crazy. The SPY is stronger overall than the QQQs. But the SPY retested the anomaly day this year twice. The queues never did. Do you see here? We never did. So even though in the long-term trend, the SPY is higher, stronger seemingly because it's made the brand new all-time highs already and the queues haven't. Really, we retested a critical area in the SPY that could have broken the trend of the SPY, but didn't. But we never got anywhere near the queues. So it's kind of weird. But all in all, if I look at it now and I look at the whole picture and I see everything, I say, wait a minute, things aren't as strange as they seem. Now, if you pull that anomaly day out of each chart, you say, wait a minute, things aren't that different. They look different when you look at the year. We say, wait a minute, no, they're not. No, they're not. We're showing the strength in the queues. They're holding and supporting themselves very, very well. Better this year than last. And then you see the spy and you say, wait a minute. But when you look at this just in the last month, you say, oh, it looks weak. No, not really. We never got anywhere near here, here. And here we got all the way down there. We tested it twice this year. So do you see, it's, it's not as different as it looks, seemingly, but not really. I don't know if this makes any sense. But the other positive thing about this week is Tesla's earnings. And there is no chance, no chance that Tesla doesn't gap up on the earnings. And in fact, I think it explodes. Too bad it's just too expensive to do an option in it. It's absolutely unaffordable. But this is going to explode on the earnings this week. It's tomorrow night. So if the market doesn't have a big gap up tomorrow morning and rally tomorrow huge, which it very well could, it will by Thursday. Tesla is going to explode like a banshee. And there's nothing that's going to stop this from exploding. It will explode in the earnings. It will help the market. And the target on this is 280. It could gap up to 280 and run. It could gap up to 280 and fall. It could run up and gap up to 260 and run up to 280. Target on Tesla is 280. And this is tomorrow night. And this is going to be a bombshell. It's going to just be an explosion of all time. So that is really going to help the market this week, too. It's the biggest name out this week, and it's going to explode. I mean, it's just going to blow away every single member of the planet. You thought Facebook was an explosion last week. Tesla's going to look like, Tesla's going to make the Facebook gap up look like a baby because this is going to just blow everything out of the water completely. And it's fallen for the last week. So this is ready to explode. All right, so getting back to it, cues are higher tomorrow morning. Have to do it. Have to do it, and I do believe that we do do it. 106, 106.25, that's all it has to do. We rally up, target tomorrow's 107. I'd love to roll out of bed and see a gap of 107, 108. One of these days we will. I keep predicting it's gonna happen. I said it for the last month. I said, don't be surprised if one of these days we gap up and have some huge massive gap up in the market. But as I was talking to my broker this afternoon, I said, you know what, Julie, this is the thing that people get upset with the market. Then they feel like the market's against them. The market isn't against anyone. The market is just living and breathing and doing its thing. Market never broke the uptrend the entire year. But people thought it did. Then people were happy we rallied here. People then bought in here and we didn't go far. And when we didn't go far, then people get scared and scared and sell and panic and sell. But this is not institutional panic. But this is what upsets people. They say, wait a minute, we just were higher. Now we're lower. Screw you, market. But the fact is the market never broke the uptrend. Never broke the uptrend anywhere. Anywhere, 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 anywhere. never broke it. So, I mean, if you're long, you should have been long here. But, you know, anyways. The point was to go long here is late. And even if you're long here, there's no reason to kill it. There's nothing wrong here. But we could have broken the low from Friday today. We didn't. It's a huge sign of strength. We're higher. So I see bullishness Wednesday, Thursday, Friday into the rest of the calendar week. They say sell in May. Not going to happen this year. It's going to be unusual. It's going to be very unusual. And now that I look at the, both of the charts of the QQQs and the SPY, I say, way, they are not that different at all now that I look at everything together. And it was institutional buying that supported the market today. And that's the biggest thing that I saw this morning that I see now in the close. And I knew if we did that, we were going to be okay. This is a very weird look. It's a look that people don't know how to read. It's a look that people get confused about. And people are very confused when we have a rally like this and then don't follow through with it and break. But this really isn't a break. It's kind of a couple day sell off. I don't remember the reason and I don't even care. I just look up every morning and I look at the gaps. And that's all that you can do. In fact, what was the reason for this stupid sell-off day? I remember that. I was like, what? That was just weird. Because we actually gapped up and fell. 
and we kind of we started to follow through but then we fell in the day i don't remember the reason but the point was that we're not really following and everything that's strong let's just look at a couple things here and let's just look at everything here that's really movers and shakers in the market and this gives you a better picture and then ask me any questions if anybody has any questions i'm in here with the class let's just look at everything that i know is really strong okay this looks okay this looks fantastic facebook where you looked at still looks okay just all these things are these are, this is this is buying opportunity in the market all these things are buying opportunities let's look at apple oops apple looks the worst of all the things i've looked at but apple is still okay not fabulous but still okay tesla we already looked at what else no, that's not the one I wanted. Hold on. Crash line. Look at this. These things are monsters. Yep, look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this. Look at this beast. That looks great. This is gapping up with something here tonight. What was the other one? Google. And Google looks great too. All of these things are buying opportunities. If you're ready to take the chance, ready to take the chance to believe the market higher. And if you don't, you don't know what you're doing. You sit and you wait in the sidelines. But all of these things are great buying opportunities in the market if you're gutsy enough to take the chance. Because I'm telling you, these things are going to rally and pull all the way around themselves. But a lot of people are scared. So they're going to miss the opportunity. And that's where the money lies. The money lies in the opportunity. It, 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 if you have to pay a million dollars for something, where's the opportunity? You want to get a good price in something with a good risk to reward, with a good move, a good cost of a good risk to reward. And the risk to reward has to do with the cost you're paying for the thing that you're buying. But you got to know how to read the trend. And the gaps really helped me. And today's gap down very well could have fallen and broken through everything. And I said it might do it. And, if, and I got up this morning, I looked at it, I said, well, fine. If that's what we're going to do, then everything will fall off the planet. But it didn't. And when it didn't, and I see it here now and how we closed, I realized that we got bought today. The fact that we didn't close green doesn't matter. This happened, and there's no taking away from the happening of this. This wasn't an intraday lollygag. This actually was real money that came in that blew the market over the high today, flipped the market green. I would be no reason this would go over the high of, of yesterday today. This did happen, and it's there, and it's real, and we were supported. So this is Melissa Arm with a stock swoosh. If you're interested in the next Golden Gap class, it's May 15th, May 14th and 15th. Email me at melissathestockswoosh.com for more information. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.